Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Notes in the Sewing Room. My name's Becky. Thanks for joining me today. And of course, welcome back if you are already a subscriber and someone that visits my channel every now and again or all the time. That's amazing. Thanks for joining me again. So today's video is all about my latest make, which is actually this one that I'm wearing here. And this is the Tilling the Buttons Pearl Cardigan. So if you want to hear more about what I've made and how I found it and a general review of the pattern, then stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. So if you are a regular viewer, you'll know that I'm in a new location and that is basically because I've moved house. So I'm not sure yet whereabouts in the house is the best place to actually film my videos, but at the minute I'm in the living room because I felt like the light was okay, but do let me know what you think of the lighting. And I know last time, I'm really sorry, there was a few problems with the picture and, and I don't really know why, but yeah, so sorry about those kind of technical problems last time if, if you did experience that at your end. But I shall try harder in this video and hopefully this comes out a little bit better. I have recorded a little clip and watched it back and I think the lighting and picture and stuff look generally okay. So fingers crossed that's all right for you this time. If you do enjoy watching today's video, um, I'd love it if you could press that like button and leave me any comments you'd like down below. Um, it just basically encourages YouTube to share this video with other people that do like sewing and um, yeah that would be amazing. I don't really understand how the YouTube algorithm works but that tends to help if you do hit that like button and leave me some comments so thank you very much. So I don't know about you but every time Tilling the Buttons releases a pattern I'm always really excited to know what it's going to be, what it's going to be like and this one was no different. So I was actually really really fortunate this time that um, the team over at Tilling the Buttons contacted me and asked me if I'd like an early co copy of this pattern. So of course I said, yes, please, I would love one. Um, so there was actually no obligation for me to review it or to post any pictures about it or anything like that. But of course, I really couldn't wait to have a go at making it. And, you know, I just wanted to share how I found it with you, basically, in case you're having a go at making it yourself or maybe, you know, it's maybe on your list for the future or something like that. So the pearl cardigan is a wrap cardigan, so you can see on the lovely model on the front here, um, this one's got the long sleeve. There are a couple of different sleeve variations in there, so you can do um, a short sleeve version if you'd like to, there's a balloon sleeve version or the plain long sleeve version like the one that I have made. I will put some uh, footage in of me wearing the cardigan so you can see uh, kind of what it looks like kind of full length. Um, and I will put in some pictures as well if that works for you. Um, hopefully that will just give you a little bit of an idea about the fit and that kind of thing. So the pearl cardigan, I've got the paper copy here, but it's also available in a PDF if you'd like to make it as a, in, the, in the PDF version. So it's available in tilling the button sizes one through to 10. So that's UK six through to UK 24. Um, and it's actually suitable according to the pattern instructions here for medium weight drapey knit fabrics with at least 20% stretch. So I actually used a medium weight sweatshirt in type fabric, which I bought from Higgs and Higgs. So I've had this fabric in my stash for quite a while. If I just come a little bit closer to be able to see what it's like. So it's got a little bit of a, kind of like a, a spot, but not quite a, a polka dot. So you might be able to see my Labrador Bentley if I just zoom the camera down. There he is, he's just sat with me in the chair here. Um, but yeah, so I've got a kind of spot on here, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what you call it really. But yeah, so this is a, I think it's an organic sweatshirty type fabric that I bought from Higgs and Higgs, like I said, a while ago, which I think worked perfectly actually for this pattern. It's got just amount, the right amount of stretch, not too much, not too little. And I felt like the weight of the fabric tended to work quite well as well. Um, According to the pattern pack, you could use a sweater knit, a jacquard knit, a stretch velvet knit, a ponte, or a lightweight French terry fabric. So I'm sure all of those would work well. Um, I've actually got some French terry in my stash that I did consider using, but um, I decided to go for this version instead. So I actually used um, not quite two meters of fabric, probably about 1.8 eight meters if I was guessing something like that I have got a little bit of this fabric left over so um, I can maybe use it in the future for 
I don't know, some cuffs and that sort of thing um, if I wanted to. So I didn't like to throw the, the, the rest of it away because one, I don't really like waste. And the other thing is that it's just too nice, really. And I just thought it might be quite nice to use for something else in the future. Um, but I, I really like this pattern. It's a really quick make if you're looking for something um, just to sew up over a, a couple of evenings. Or if you have got a bit more time, you can definitely sew it up in probably half a day, um, maybe under that. I think it took me, if I was to add up all the little bits of time, probably about two hours in total to sew up um, the actual top. Um, I made most of it on my overlocker. I've got a Husqvarna S15, so I um, made most of it on there. The only bit that I jumped onto my sewing machine for was actually to create a kind of, it's not a buttonhole, but it's kind of like a large opening in the side seam that you basically have to thread the bow through. So if I just open up my cardigan, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. gets just there and then of course this goes back round find the other bow and that's it I found it really straightforward to make I think it is definitely suitable for beginners if you do want to take your time making this should be absolutely fine I think it has got a little bit more uh, detail than your regular kind of basic beginner project if you were brand new to sewing, but you wanted to have a go at using a sweater fabric or, you know, a, a jersey fabric of some sort, I'd probably start with something like the Tilly and the Buttons Cocoa instead. This is great for beginners, but you have got, like I say, just a few more pattern pieces. So you've got two pieces for the front, one piece for the back. You've got this long uh, neck band that you've got to kind of stretch into place. You've got the cuffs. And of course, you've got the ties that go on to uh, the sides of the waist. Now, one thing to watch out for is um, just watching where the notches are and um, whereabouts you need to put the right tie and the left tie in terms of the way that the cardigan actually wraps around your body. Because if you don't have them in the right place, then potentially the cardigan might not kind of wrap and tie in the right place. So I was quite careful to match up um, where the pattern piece is actually said to put the longer tie and the shorter side uh, tie for... Um, the tie pieces basically if that makes sense um, that didn't sound very clear to me but hopefully you know what I'm talking about so as usual the pattern comes with a, a lovely instruction booklet here as I said I've got the paper copy but if you've got a, a pdf version I'm sure you'll get the instructions as well and Tilly holds your hand through the various steps there's all these different pictures in here with the clear instructions and of course you get the layout guide if you want to use it of how to lay out your pattern pieces on your fabric I really like how in Tilly patterns they actually have plenty of pictures I'm the type of person that learns more from a picture than actually reading the words obviously I, I do read the description as well but I do kind of like to see how things are laid out and you know what it should look like in the end when you have sewn it on your machine I decided to go for the straight size three in the version that I made which is the UK size 10 so I'm really pleased with the the fit overall it fits me well across the shoulders and generally in the body I would say that it's perhaps a little bit on the short side I probably if I was to make it again would maybe add about an inch or an inch and a half onto the length of this top that's basically because I'm tall um, but it does work well with a high-waisted skirt and I do tend to wear high-waisted skirts so generally it's fine as it is um, I am quite tall though I'm, I'm five foot ten so obviously if you're taller than me or shorter than me then you might be happy with the length or you might want to play around with that it's obviously personal preference but I am really pleased with the length that it is at the moment it's just maybe something for me to keep in mind for the future now I really like the length of the arms on this pattern so I I found with some Tilly and the Buttons patterns previously, one being the Billy jumper dress type pattern, uh, that the sleeves are actually more kind of bracelet length than they are full length. And this one's actually got the full length sleeve. So, you know, it comes all the way down to the bottom of my wrist there. So I'm really pleased with that because, you know, at this time of the year, it's a little bit cold and I'm quite a cold person anyway, to be honest. So to actually have the, the full length sleeves is actually really good for me. So I'm really pleased with that. And, you know, I do find in some patterns that I do have to extend the arm pieces. Um, and that's maybe just I've got long arms, I don't know. Um, 
but for this one it was absolutely fine so that's two thumbs up for me from that point of view. I think another thing about this pattern that I really liked was it's a cardigan pattern but obviously you could wear it with or without a top underneath. Now for me I think it would probably be a little bit low cut to wear a top without a top underneath so I've actually got one of my Tilly and the Buttons Coco tops layered underneath here. It also works really well with one of my Agnes tops underneath or basically anything that's a little bit you know fitted not too not too baggy basically would work quite nicely underneath this so i've got my cocoa tucked, tucked into my skirt and then i've got this sat on top so um that has actually worked really well for me now, this cardigan is actually different to other cardigans that i've already got in my wardrobe which is great um it's nice for me to actually try something new rather than making the same old thing all the time um but um i think i probably will be wearing this cardigan with a top underneath because like i say I probably feel just a little bit exposed without anything under there but obviously it just depends on what you like and perhaps if you were to wear it as a top instead you can maybe add I don't know a little popper on the inside there just to kind of keep it closed a little bit more if you wanted to. I think there's definitely quite a lot of scope with this pattern to play around with the types of fabric that you're using and you could really sort of dress it up or dress it down depending on the type of fabric you decided to use. I feel like my one's quite casual in the kind of style of fabric and stuff that I've used but um, on the back of this little booklet here that comes with the pattern um, there's um, this lovely kind of shiny silver version so that would be perfect for you know your, your night out or if you're going to some sort of an event or something like that. I think it could look great to dress up a skirt or a nice pair of jeans or something like that and maybe team it with a nice handbag and a pair of heels. So overall I found this to be a really easy pattern to make, really straightforward overall and um, it was really fun to just try something new and of course I was really excited to get that advanced copy like I said just so that I could have a go at it straight away and let you know what I thought of the pattern. Just in case you are having a go at making this at home and you're wondering how much fabric you actually need for this project, um, according to the pattern pack if you are doing the long sleeve or the balloon sleeve version and you're making sizes one through to five you're going to need about 1.9 meters of fabric according to this but like I say I made a size three and I probably use slightly less fabric than that but obviously it depends on how wide your fabric is um, and if you are making sizes uh Tilly in the button sizes six, three to 10, you're gonna need around about 2.1 meters according to the pattern pack. Obviously you'll need less if you are making the short sleeve version. You can definitely make this cardigan completely on your sewing machine if you wanted to. You really don't have to have an overlocker. Of course, most jersey fabrics, they're not gonna fray or anything like that. So it's, you know, just depends on what um, things you've got at home, what you prefer to use, that sort of thing. But um, I thought it worked really, really well doing it on the overlocker and then just jumping onto the sewing machine just for a couple of little bits. If you are looking for other inspiration uh, from the, the pearl cardigan, do jump over onto Instagram and have a look. So if you search the hashtag sewing pearl, then, you know, you'll find loads on there of different ones that people have made. Um, I saw that Sally from the uh, Secret Life of the Seamstress has made a beautiful pink version, which I really liked. So maybe I'll have a go at doing a pink one at some point in the future. Maybe, I don't know, I'm trying not to buy too much fabric at the moment. And particularly because we've moved house, um, it's kind of occurred to me moving house and moving on my bits and pieces, how much um, fabric I've actually got in my stash already. So I'm thinking, Becky, you've really got to work your way through all of that fabric. So and that's what I'm going to try and do over the next, uh, well, I don't know, I say few months, it's probably going to take me a lot longer than that. And I'm sure I will buy some fabric here and there, but I am going to try and be really good and uh, use a lot of the fabric that I've already got as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my cardigan today and learning about how I found the pattern. Um, like I say, overall, really straightforward make. I would definitely recommend it to uh, you if you want to have a go at making it in the future. And I feel like it's a really versatile cardigan that could be dressed up or dressed down just depending on what you're looking for it to do. If you have enjoyed watching today, as I said at the beginning of the video, I would love it if you could leave me any comments below. Let me know if you're having a go at making the pearl card again, or of course, if you've made it already, how you found it, what fabric you use, that kind of thing. And perhaps if you think that, you know, a different version of the cardigan might suit me in the future, um, that'd be great. Just let me know below and maybe I'll have a go at doing another one. Um, and if you have enjoyed watching it, I would, this video, sorry, I would love it if you could be a future subscriber um, if you're not already. But thank you for joining me today. It's always really nice to have you here with me. Um, I always really appreciate your time and I'll see you again soon. Bye.